Um, hello all. So this is going to be like a, more of a kind of performative um, presentation of pedagogy. Um, I think one of the most important things about what it means um, for me to be in a classroom, why I'm there, um, is to, to um, you know, see more folks like myself that I didn't have the privilege of experiencing um, when I was an undergrad. Um, you know, those kind of moments of not talking about um, Latinx um, um, stories and poetry um, I and queer, uh, you know, desperately waiting for the class to mention a queer subject or, um, you know, the once in the blue moon uh, class on queer literature. Um, and so um, in my class, I, uh, classes, I try to to really just like go hard <laughs> and really be myself. Um, and so um, for, for this um, presentation, what to know um, is that at Cornell, we have um, uh, everyone across the, cap, um, the campus who's an undergrad um, is required to take what's called a first year writing seminar. For this, uh, students um, are, uh, basically ex expected to write a lot um, uh, of essays, to learn about writing. Um, I kind of cheated and you'll see. <laughs> I was just like, you know what? To learn about writing, you need to learn how to think. <laughs> and that's how I got away with it. So they, they wrote. They also like grew and they also played games. And I was just like, we're learning. And I'm hoping that reflects in my evaluations that it's just like, we're, we're doing something different. And so, uh, you know, they also, the students are sourced from across all the different colleges on campus. So um, what that means is like, we have, you know, I can have an architecture student sitting next to a veterinary school student sitting next to, um, someone who uh, actually uh, several students in my class ended up uh, from computer sciences. So we kind of have this mix there um, and uh, that's kind of your, your setting. And so uh, for this, I'm going to need y'all to, to really imagine with me, come, come, come in. I know we're on Zoom, it's at the end of a long conference. I, had some stuff going on, so um, I'm sorry I couldn't make anyone else's. Hopefully, I'll, I'll be able to watch the recordings when things calm down. But, um, you know, so much learning just happened. But, you know, that, that, that's maybe similar to in, in some moment to, you know, you're, you just graduated high school. You know, you all, you have all the learning in your head and you're just moving, you're just like, okay, cruising, and you're gonna take all that learning and apply it and do some cool, exciting shit after that. And then now you're at Cornell University. You're a first year now, what? You're a first year at Cornell. And so you are here and you don't, you, you think you're the big shit. <laughs> and then you land up in my ear like, oh, you know, I have to take this damn FWS virtual writing seminar. I know how to write. And you're here, and you are are you know you 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 fill in the rest of your classes. And I asked my students at the end of the semester why they the last day I told them why they chose my class, and they were like a lot of them were like it fit into my schedule, and I was like thank you for being honest. So this there's this random ass word uh, class called Word and Image um, that uh, uh, fits into your schedule. It says something about, oh, you're going to be talking about, you know, different medium and you're like, oh, that's cool. Um, and also, it sounds easy. That's the second reason people took my class. Um, and then you show up the first day and you see me <laughs> move my hoops. I usually have some sort of chain or this little, you know, I, I'm, 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 I'm fucking flexing, you know, with my little O-ring. Um, and, uh, I don't, I, I'm, I'm wearing red lipstick now. I should be wearing red lipstick. I introduced myself that I should be wearing red lipstick. Cause like, I, you know, I, I have pictures of my sister from the nineties and like, this was the look and I, I love it. So they show up and like, huh, 
So uh, we're presented with um, my syllabus. Immediately something's wrong. The word and image is really small. And now we're at embody euphoria in queer cyberspace with this picture of the animatrix and you're like, what the hell is going on? Um, and I introduce myself, Ariel Straya, they, them. Um, I do a land acknowledgement that we're on the Gai Kahono, um of homelands uh, and that this is uh, uh, the historic and contemporary presence of their, of these members or exist here and um, exist before and existed before Cornell. Um, and you're like, okay, you know, that, that's kind of getting standard around here. And, but I come back to like, we're learning about actually embodied euphoria and queer spider cyber space. That's a mouthful. And then, so we stop and I introduce for us the uh, course description, my course description, not the one that was given to you and you signed up for and you thought it was gonna be easy. So I'll read it in full because I think this will lay out a lot of my um, on oncoming comments. Um, so a lot of us has spent a lot, a lot of, of the last two years staring at our screens, even before I can stop sharing for a moment, even before COVID-19 pandemic began. Questions about our humanity have come into focus against the increased use of digital devices. What or who do we become when we plug into cyberspace? What feminisms exist in the digital world and at what cost? Inspired in part by uh, Legacy Russell's book, Glitch Feminism, highly recommend. Uh, we will begin to answer this question through the analytical lens of embodied euphoria in queer cyberspace. Over the semester, we will engage with widely varied cultural texts including poetry, films, games, art, theory, and more, by contemporary trans and queer creators, thinking about the body, land, gender, and joy, both IRL or AFK and digitally. There are offers the opportunity to consider how we find dis or uh, embodiment and also embodiment through affirmation, kinship, dejection, and resistance across cyberspace even as our worlds, uh, our virtual, virtual worlds become more and more privatized, destructive and censored. Through our own writing and reflection on these texts, we will define for ourselves how queer perspectives on queer uh, virtual ecologies can guide us in our current moment and beyond. So I'm putting one sentence in there that, I, um, that felt really relevant. And because I was copying from a PDF, the line's all weird, but you get it. And so we sit with this description and I ask students to pull out what are things that stand out to you? Students name digital devices. Great. IRL, AFK. What's the difference? Why are you saying in real life and also away from the computer? Um, giving people an option about what that is. Of course, students focus on this entire sentence, this duality between um, resistance, but also the censorship and you know the encroaching you know monopolization of our our digital world. And so um, they're like, okay, that's cool. There's a lot more, but whatever. And immediately, I also. Um, introduce a, 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 another layer to this that um, I that I commit to lit posting a linguistic space that celebrates our unique voices. I myself will code switch and occasionally say fuck. I said fuck a lot. I cursed a lot in my class as you can see during my presentation. I'm already there <laughs> and it's just like you know it, it, it because this is me this is my voice and I have discovered I speak better. I'm from New York City, y'all. <laughs> like I am, I'm straight. I hail from Queens. Like for me to get my voice out, I tried so hard to be prim and perfect my first year and a half at university. I fucking imploded for a lot of reasons. But part of it was because of that expectation. And for students, there's a there's a familiarity of, you know, there's only 16 students in my class. 
versus hundreds that they're usually getting for their lecture. So they really get to know me and I, they get to know me. <laughs> and um, part of that is also um, comes with a responsibility. And this caused a certain change in my, my class that I said, this is a class centered on queer experiences with euphoria. We will be speaking a lot about trans creators. We may, and as such, we may have trans students in the class and I am myself in non-binary. Misgendering inhibits the ability for us to delve into this topic. Misgendering peers and writers will read, uh, we read will result in major deductions on participation grades. And I will personally correct you if you misgender me um, because I'm the instructor. I'm like, y'all can learn off of me. But after the second time, I will no longer uh, respond to being misgender. After this class, I had, or actually, I think even during it, I had uh, between that, six students out of 16 um, leave within the next 10 minutes of the class ending. Because, and I, I suspect part of it might have been me, Part of it might have been like, oh, this is harder than I thought, but I really do think I could see on the students' faces which ones were like, I don't know about that deduction. So this was immediately setting up for my um, students a certain kind of classroom, which I began, you know, even though it doesn't have, you know, much to do yet with the, the um, topic of this conference, but I think in order to have the conversations I'm going to be talking about and going, giving you an overview, this is me stepping out from you imagining it for a sec, but like that, um, I mean, I feel like I need to establish this, that I made it extremely clear with my students, this um, kind of setup in advance, that I actually worked with a student, uh, a trans student who was interested in joining the class, but, um, who, and he was very worried though about um, misgendering. Um, and he's like, yo, I don't know. I don't know if I can do that. Um, and I promised him, like, this is what I'll do. I'll uphold it. Um, and I think that changed the, the whole attitude of the class. So we established that people who were gonna, were not gonna be cool, not have left, so you, but you, you decide, you here again, you have decided to stay. And so one of the first things we do is, um, you know, I, like I said earlier, like, Oh, nope, I don't think that's the right screen. Um, uh, one of the first things we do is, um, you know, like we have a lot of definitions. What is all this stuff? So um, we start with thinking through, um, you know, each of them. So students are given embodied, euphoria, queer, and cyberspace. They're assigned different ones, broken up the thing um, into different sections. And if you, um, you know, you imagine that if you uh, are teaching a lot of different terms, you know, you might, it's just like, you know what? Break it up a little bit. This is based off of the data is um, uh, kind of drawing scheme of, you know, one person draws a little bit, they pass it on, fold over the top part, and everyone kind of ends up making this little body. So for us, I'm gonna start with, let's do Euphoria. So the students come together and, you know, they make a nice little description. Uh, you know, it's a spike of extreme happiness it's, and it's often short lived. It's a, uh, a state that seems unrealistic and impossible to hold on forever. It's a rush of serotonin. And then let's see another one, queer. You know, it's odd, strange, eccentric, you know, um, it's a spectrum. And they, so, and then the last, um, big the, I should have said this earlier, you're broken up into groups of about four. You are tasked with giving about 10, uh, you have about like 10, 15 minutes to write a hundred words within your group. Then you are, um, after that 15 minutes, you're passed along to the next definition to edit what was there. You have five minutes. Then you we go through the entire vocabulary. So, um, you know, this is their definition uh, that you kind of come up with about cyberspace. It, you know, it's like, it's about computers, metaverse and technology. It connects all different parts of the world through websites and programs. 
and it enables people to chat online. I think this is a good solid start. And so where we end up, uh, let's go here, um, is thinking through first, what, more definitions. What are we trying to understand? What are we trying to um, kind of put in place for ourselves of what all of these different terms come together to mean? And so I we start off together with thinking through um, uh, uh, a couple different things like cruising utopia. I read the excerpt um, which I actually, if you're having me in a picture uh, on the screen, I have it on the letter board behind me of queerness, the warm illumination of a horizon imbued with potentiality. That is um, kind of a center theme for myself. And, um, you know, we're thinking about gender performance. Um, and so I first introduced this with a quote from Judith Butler's Gender Trouble. Um, if there is something in the uh, right in the claim, let me make this a little bigger for you all. If there is something right in the claim that one is not born, but rather becomes a woman, it follows that woman itself is a term, a process, or in, it's a term in progress, a becoming, a constructing that cannot rightfully be said to originate or to end. Gender is the repeated stylization of the body, a set of repeated acts within a highly rigid regulatory frame that congeal over time to produce the appearance of substance of a natural sort of being. That's all very cute, but what does it mean? You're a first year, you don't know half what these words mean together. So I let's focus on gender is a stylized, uh, a repeated stylization of the body. So to imagine this, we're gonna think about walk cycles of um, different, uh, of, of games, but also these include, you know, um, not only the player character, but the, the, the AI and the, um, um, you know, the non-playable characters and the NPCs in the background. So this is uh, just a random person talking about um, Royal Skies, trying to help us uh, create a female walking animation. Fight with mine. One day, the patrons and I will save up enough money to buy a $7,000 state-of-the-art motion capture suit. And on that day, I will happily pay the most beautiful girl I can find to strut down in a room and record her perfection into an animation that you can apply to your own character rig. But that is not today. So in the meanwhile, here are a few tips to keep in mind when attempting the hardest animation you could possibly do. When a confident, beautiful work of art walks towards your direction, you may have noticed there's a lot going on. And even if you don't exactly understand what you can tell that there's a rhythm to it and after doing this for years i have noticed that 90 percent of this animation really just depends on four frames so let's start with the first put the lead foot in the front and the back foot so here we're thinking about you know movement um and also kind of this ogling <laughs> um and um for this though, you know, animation and creation um, tell us a lot about character design, um, but you know, how we communicate gender and um, of, of presentation is uh, very much a, a way of, uh, of narrating gender or is very uh, narrating beyond just, this is a pretty picture. So for example, um, Frozen, uh, here's an example of someone um, uh, putting on uh, both, uh, the, both of the Frozen sisters over Tangled's Rapunzel, being like, yo, fucking Disney, <laughs> y'all lazy as fuck. Um, and um, kind of making this again, this is also, um, another kind of layer of uh, uh, a textbook or a text post on Tumblr that every woman uh, in Disney and Pixar has the same face shape. So these kind of rounded shapes. And here's a diversity of the men's faces. Here's what we have for 
women and girls. So um, that uniformity is communicating something. Um, and then we're like, okay, but let's really look at this together. Um, I show you, again, this is thinking about, you know, the stylized repetition of the body. I ask you to compare where, how it is gender performed and created. How are the male characters more dynamic, stronger. <laughs> little arm flick. Even here, there's a brother and a sister. I ask you, how are these characters already communicating difference in these stylized repetitions? The boy is leaning forward, you say, um, excited, the girl in pink, arms together, um, you know, happy, joyful, but in no position to fight like this guy. So we kind of go through that. We think about together um, what, you know, already um, in, in animation, in these visuals, we can learn something about how gender is created. Um, and then, um, let me, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll quickly go over this one. Um, you have, you know, thinking still, how do we establish even talking about computer and cyberspace? How do we interact and uh, with it? That one of the examples to consider is, um, you know, how we can even find definitions. So here's one, uh, a homework assignment you have on gender euphoria um, that uh, I give you a couple of different websites that try to define it, but they have different, um, uh, they're selling different things. So here's one, um, actually I'll do that one next, last. So here's one that's, sell, that's a, a gender neutral um, website selling hoodies. Um, and you know it, it's created by two queer um, uh, butch women who focus on Obviously, you would dress it down with, you know, this sweater with a uh, unzipped, uh, with a classic rock t-shirt and sneakers and ripped jeans, but you can also get all bougie by wearing it with ha uh, halfway zipped over a, a mini dress. So this kind of imagining different things, it never says euphoria in this, in this uh, description, but you note in your, as you write in your write-up that it's, it's helping you imagine different. There is now Plume, a website that um, works with um, uh, getting people access to transition care in various ways. And so here's a really, it ends up being a very medical um, definition. And then um, we have Tinder, uh, uh, Tinder, uh, which I'm not going to actually play this, but it's actually uh, five people explain what non-binary means to them. It's really nice, actually. They, they talk a lot, they answer really cute questions. Students, um, one of the questions for the reflection is um, when do they, when do they start, try to start to sell you something? Um, and students say, there's, there's no, they're never trying to sell you something. That is not true. It's right here in the description that they are tying, you know, they, so they are providing definitions, but as we'll talk about, you know, cyberspace is not, is a place of, like I said earlier in the, the, the line I included in the chat where um, commerce happens. So um, all of this is kind of layered into that. And then this also applies to uh, da uh, Dame, which is a um, sex toy um, industry or a sex toy shop. So they actually say it does a, this. This website does a really great def way, uh, job at defining it. Until you get to where is it? Around here, 
Use different sex toys to uh, find which sensations make you feel the most euphoric. Air suction pulses can feel similar to sucking uh, a partner suckling on your genitals while pa using palm to graze your, uh, from the bottom of your clit to the top can feel similar to licking. Whoa, okay. And then, you know, you click through. Where does this lead us to? Oh, they're selling this to us. And that's 75 bucks for that little shit. Like, you know, and they're like, uh, we open this in class. We talk about like, oh, like the moment that, you know, you're, you're the, this kind of harsh transition um, uh, and that we see in social media all the time. That's why, you know, we now have sponsored posts needing to be included. Um, that uh, um, the way that kind of commerce is, is, is told to us that's um, put in this really discreet way. Um, and a student, and you know, you and your your uh, compatriots in the class uh, giggle very much over looking and talking about sex toys in class. I will say. <laughs> um, and then you know, we go and we do a couple more stuff, and you're like, okay, um, this is kind of opening up for us. And eventually, we watch the the Matrix together. So we've at this point um, in the semester, you know have a kind of idea about these different terms together, what queerness is, euphoria, um, uh, and cyberspace. So what we do together um, is you're assigned to watch The Matrix, um, and uh, you <laughs> um, have never watched this before, and you're like 1999, and you you're watching it and you say that the, the graphics suck. It's, you know, you don't like it because the graphics suck, which, you know, I, I, as the instructor, I will, I will put my hand in my, my, my face in my hands and just be like, y'all, this was cutting edge. So you agree with this and we move on. Um, you're assigned to really um, analyze this movie through um, a couple different, um, uh, values that were compiled by um, Amy uh, Villa Rejo um, in film studies. So framing and cinematography, sound, editing and lighting performance. So we'll quickly look at a bit of this scene. As you can see, we've had our eye on you for some time now, Mr. Anderson. It seems that you've been living two lives. In one life, you're Thomas A. Anderson, program writer for a respectable software company. You have a social security number, you pay your taxes, and you... You might notice help your if this was the, the scene assigned to you, the quietness of the, the other life um, is lived in computers uh, of of the room Go by there's the no windows Neo versus later on when you have uh, the character oracle for example who is trying to One of these is a computer program but is interacting with neo um to to open his mind there is a window prominently shown in the I'm and going to be well, here again. There's enclosed can be, Mr. the, the uh, Mr. Here, Smith is is dressed help. formally, you know, is is shown as an authority. We figure. know that you've been contacted. Um, it's supposed to be represented until later. We know he erupts. There's all of these, you know, morphous. different um, clues that we can Whatever start pulling and understanding you know this from brought. this. Um, of this video to, and watching it together in that kind of um, and really spending time on um, getting to the basics. Um, but, you know, one of the things that come out of this um, in particular is thinking through, you know, we want the humans to win. You know, we are on the side of Neo. We see Mr. Smith, this one particular, but all the other, um, the other agents as well, no, I'm saying this whole wrong. Y'all know, <laughs> um, um, but the agent is is trying to. Um, uh, I just tripped myself up on that, but you know, the agent is is um, shown as this kind of, um, 
you know, monstrous uh, form, this antagonist to ourselves, the, um, and the whole kind of joy of the ending is the thought that the of humanity um, reestablishing its place. Um, we talk about, after we, we spend time kind of breaking down the movie itself, um, the fact that the Kalskis are, um, are since have come out as trans women um, and that uh, a lot of people have viewed the matrix as a trans metaphor. How does that change our perspective of, you know, the fact that um, the blue pill could represent, um, you know, uh, 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 antidepressants, while the red pill could represent um, estrogen. And, um, you know, this kind of sensitive reading can make us more aware of other kind of layers of, of the film and the possibilities of its narrative. So we turn after that discussion to the animatrix, um, the kind of, there is a series of short animated videos put together um, and, you know, they have different creators, directors, artists. Um, it's a really beautiful anthology. But um, I turn us specifically to The Second Resistance, which was written by the Wachowskis. Um, so, uh, and this story um, uh, tells about the, the, the uprising from the robots. And so I'll play a moment from it. In the beginning, there was man, and for a time, it was good. But humanity's so-called civil societies soon fell victim to vanity and corruption. Then man made the machine in his own likeness. Oops, pardon me. <laughs> Coming through. <laughs> Thus did man become the architect of his own demise. At that time considered as a subordinate and inferior class At B166ER's murder trial, the prosecution argued for an owner's right to destroy property. B166ER testified that he simply did not want to die. I won't show that, but um, so that um, what we learn here is that the first instance of uprising um was from a like a butler bot right someone who is doing um this work who is uh treated as a slave to um the uh of uh, 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 humanity um and you know we've been thinking about euphoria as only um you know what is presented immediately what is um uh, uh, convenient for us, but um, that's what we kind of get from the matrix itself. Um, but now with the animatrix being asked, you know, this a, a second layer of uh, what it is to be um, utopia of, you know, who is your utopia for and for what? That depending on the, the perspective, we can see different layers of, of interaction and sympathy, um, and you know, I, I we sh we play together um, in class after talking about the Animatrix. This little game, Roomba. Wait, come on. Okay, so it's this little game. Oh, oh, there it is. So you're you're playing you're playing a little Roomba. You just have to go around. I hope this is the start of a productive night. Su sucking up dust gives me joy. At least I tell, uh, at least that's what I tell myself. Toward the end, 
the Roomba, I think without my work, I would go insane. I don't think many people really know what goes into the sucking dust, plotting the perfect brew. Oh, where is it? You humans, they piss me off. I think they will take my work for granted. Fuck them. And then um, the Roomba uh, plots murder of all humanity. Um, and then it's like, nah, nah, let me calm down. And for this, you know, we're thinking about robots right now and, and you know, an AI. But I talk about like the connection between the, um, this bot from the Animatrix and the Roomba is uh, the idea of, you know, uh, cleaners, right? People cleaning. And then I share a story about like, yo, when my mom first came over from Guatemala, she, ooh, uh, she was, um, uh, she started off cleaning for a really rich family. And, you know, she was undocumented, but like she was going out doing her best and like, yo, that shit was hard and they did not treat her right. They treated her as a pet. Um, Sci-fi oftentimes tells the story of our lives and, but it uh, will often overwrite the um, existence or it will, it will use the metaphor of, of oppressed people, especially, um, you know, within um, this, uh, robots um, and AI, um, their, I, the idea of um, um, slaves, obviously a, a, a parallel to um, triangle uh, trade slave um, or chattel slavery of, uh, in the Americas, that these kind of stories of empathy and loss uh, is, is tied to um, more than that. However, there's also this kind of part of, you know, how do we still, um, going back to what I talked uh, about uh, with the commerce uh, and looking at the different websites for, um, what's it called? Me spacing out also prime time aerial instructing <laughs> um, and forgetting shit. Um, so, uh, the, the, when we were looking at the websites and how commerce can affect our, our access to information, that uh, one of the viral things that, you know, that, was, that first introduced um, this uh, Boston Dynamics bot, um, that I, this is how I was introduced to it. We'll be singing when we're winning. We'll be singing. I wanted to end the sentence. Um, so, you know, it, this, this bot, you know, it's, it's even the, this, this random kind of poster describe it as abuse. We are, you know, shown people kicking it and interacting with it. We see the robot stumbling. However, um, oh, I forgot to pull this up, but let's see if I can find it wrong. Sorry. Okay. Um, you know, it, it, we we have that sympathy that we we learn from talking through the Matrix and the Roomba. However, um, the the difference here is intention. That you know the cuteness of that, and we also I also showed you um, the the little bot dancing. Um, is that it was developed for military? You know that. It's been a rough year for the NYPD. Crime is reaching record levels in the city, and today, the newest bot in blue was sent out to its first crime scene. That thing is creepy. <laughs> Meet DigiDog, the newest member of the NYPD's Technical Assistance Response Unit. Yes, a robot dog that's hounding city streets, assisting its handler. So the rest of this video includes many more um, puns and about dogs and talking about its cute and, and all that kind of stuff. While you have images of SWAT, um, people just piled up for apparently a quote unquote um, domestic disturbance. 
Um, who knows what that means? But the bot is sent out with this kind of, um, you know, cutesy um, reporting. Um, and so um, the, you know, we, we, we wrestle with what does it mean to have um, the reality of this kind of bot next to, um, you know, the, the matrix. And we kind of just leave it there. We don't answer that. Um, and then we do some other cool stuff. Um, I'm just trying to quickly run through it. We, at one point we play dress up games um, to think about gender performance again um, and how we can kind of select these things in. Um, kind of just skipping. Um, and then I think a, at a, a, a moment of, uh, that's really important for our class that follows on the theme of empathy and um, of, of um, abjection. Um, you know, I knew y'all had homework to do. Um, you know, it was midterm, you're exhausted. Um, so I didn't give you any homework. I was just like, just come to class, prepare to think. So together we watch this. And as we're watching this, um, this is um, Choral Choir by uh, Serva Dimitris. Um, I ask you to really think about like how you feeling and be honest. I know y'all are all AI people. So maybe like breaking the molds for a sec, y'all are all AI people. Maybe you have more sympathetic reading, but like you're our first year right now. How you feel watching this? If you're so inclined, you feel uh, I uh, feel free to populate the chat box. Remember, y'all first year. Ooh, ooh, ooh! Look creepy. We might also consider um, uh, this piece um, by Paula Gitano Adi, wherein um, the pro proximity to this creation um, of the autonomous robot agent, uh, autonomous, what am I, <laughs> um, it makes it sweat. How does this make you feel? It reacts to your presence. What does it look like? You can see even this this person, the the jolting back. So um, thank you, Lena. So estranged, um, uh, you or um, you know your peers taught right uh, creepy. It's a fragile intimacy. There's, um, you know, it's just like weirded out. You're gross. Um, you know, I don't want to look at you. 
uh, or I don't want to look at it anymore. I meant um, I don't want to. I it's it's nasty. Um, you're tasked then with writing a um, little like a little note, a little paragraph, um, writing those feelings um, of and all together um, to really. And I, we, you know, we're we're at this point in the semester. It's like, yo, go in. I I, I tell my students like, go in. I would rather go hard. <laughs> um, and so they talk about they they you write they write this you write this whole paragraph kind of bashing this shit and just like it is awful I don't want to look at you. Now you're tasked with you you're paired up with someone, and um, you have to read to your partner what you wrote, and your partner has to imagine that that is about them. They are now anima, or th or they are now the choir. Um, and then after that, they will read to you what um, they wrote. So you are you become um, the, the 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 robots, um, an AI kind of presence. And your question, uh, and I asked, what it feel like to be to experience the receiving end of that. The, and you know, people are like, yo, that shit hurt. <laughs> like by the end, like that really hurt. Like I didn't like that was that I was not expecting that when I was writing what I was uh, putting together. And so, um, uh, we go through, um, you know, um, yet again, the way that sci-fi and understanding of of these kind of forms. Uh, can uh, get us to think deeper about, um, you know, applications in our own world. And um, I talk about, how, um, you know, the, the, the story of Sarah Bartman, um, which was, uh, she was, or quote unquote, the hot, not, hot and top Venus. I think these are um, really famous examples, but uh, uh, she was, um, um, now I'm just reading here for a sec. Uh, no, uh, but like late 18th century in Eastern Cape or South, South Africa, she was brought over by a surgeon who, um, you know, she had a, um, a, a very large buttocks because of um, certain, uh, you know, not a, a condition. It, she was paraded around um, for the rest of her life, um, exploited, um, you know, this kind of uh, th this put on to freak shows. Um, here is an example of um, like her of a, a promotion, and um, the, and I'm not going to show it because it's it's disgusting. But even after her death, she was preserved and displayed, um, and in in France, and um, uh, for a very long time, as like a kind of just experiment and only within, I think it was 30 years ago, 20, um, was she returned to South Africa. So the way of the difference, the estrangement, I think this, the, they're, they're, that pushing away of people that's also reflected in um, uh, one of an early um, 1932 film, Freaks, um, and just the kind of the, the uh, overall um, presentation of, of freak shows. We'll make her one of us, a loving cup, a loving cup. We accept a one of us, we accept a one of us. Gooba gobble, gooba gobble. We accept her, we accept her. Gooba gobble, gooba gobble. One of us, one of us. How the presentation of this is meant to mirror some of the same kind of um, abjection uh, of uh, that that was promote what I you know I showed with choir. Um, okay, um, and how understanding that like understanding more about AI and reading that together has got us to um, think more deeper about. Um, kind of these issues. And then um, we do other stuff, but for the last assignment, um, you're tasked with 
going back to the course description, going back to um, our key terms, um, the last assignment you have to do is give your own definition of, of these words. Um, students write, you know, you might write something like, um, you know, gender euphoria is a positive inner emotional feeling or is a physical form, especially of something that's typically intangible. Um, it is a cyberspace is a digital frontier. The, uh, these are the voyages of human beings. Um, but basically th this kind of, um, right, where is it? I can't find exactly where, sorry about that. But basically all of the definitions the students give are just so much deeper and richer. And it was a privilege to watch that growth. Um, and um, that you kind of got a, a glimpse into through this presentation. And so I'll stop there and a couple, a little a couple minutes for.